Okay, in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you a couple of ways to model a airplane propeller. Okay, so let's take a look at a picture of an airplane propeller. So this is a, a photograph of an aircraft propeller. You can see that the hub here is circular and then you notice that uh, as the blade starts from the root right to the tip, there's a gentle twist. And if you look at a cross section of a propeller, you notice that you start off a very thick and you can see this cross section here, this is called an airfoil shape, which is very common in the cross section of uh, aircraft wings as well. So if you think about it, the propeller blade is like a mini wing. So you can see from these uh, cross sections, it will start off very thick and gradually it becomes thinner. And at the same time, there's a gradual twist. All right. So we're going to try to replicate this cross section and then use a number of uh, solutions in Blender to create the propeller. So we'll start off with this uh, basic cube first. And... Uh, and also, I'll suggest that you turn on this uh, under the user preferences in the add-ons. It is highly recommended that you turn on the mesh tools. All right, the mesh tools make sure the check is on. Okay, because we're going to use uh, some of the tools here later on for uh, different modeling methods. So the first thing we do is uh, we go to edit mode, select the cube, right mouse click on it, and then go to edit mode. And then we're going to get rid of... Uh, the rest of these faces because we're going to need only one of the faces here so uh, a quick way to do that will be to just go to uh, face selection mode pressing control tab then right mouse click to select this face then you press control i to go to invert selection and then press x to delete away the faces so now you're left with only one face now for this face we're going to subdivide it to a number of sections so we're going to use the uh, loop cut so i'm going to loop cut one section here right right in the middle here then control r and then a loop cuts, uh, two cuts here. So using these number of detail, we're gonna try to construct a airfoil shape. So I'm gonna press uh, number three and then press five to go to orthographic view. And then I'm gonna switch over to vertex mode to start to cr uh, reconstruct a basic uh, airfoil shape. Okay, so I'm just gonna right mouse click and select and then press G to just simply uh, move the points, okay. So what I'm doing is I right mouse click and then press G to just grab and move the points. So what I'm doing here now is I'm just creating a very basic uh, airfoil shape because later when we subdivide this shape, it's going to have the uh, the shape of the air, the propeller. Okay, it's going to uh, embody the cross section of the propeller. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with this. So we're going to use this as the root of the propeller shape. So notice that it has a, uh, a very strong uh, curve on the top and then a much less uh, under camber here. All right. So imagine this, when the air is traveling over this cross section, it's generating a low pressure up here. So it's causing it to generate lift. All right. But in this case, the propeller is spinning. So anyway, we're just going to start off with this shape and then I'm going to press A to select everything. And then I'm going to press R to rotate it slightly. Okay. And I'm just going to just tweak this a little bit more to uh, get the shape which I like. Right, again, if you can bring in the actual picture and then use it as a uh, reference from behind, you can also do that as well. Okay, so now I'm happy with this shape. Okay, I'm going to uh, switch over to face mode. And then I'm going to press A to select everything. And then I'm going to start by pressing E to extrude one small section here. And then as I extrude this small section, okay, I'm going to uh, go to the right view again and then I'm going to rotate it down slightly a little bit. And I'm going to press S to scale it up along the Y axis. So notice I press S followed by Y. So just uh, give it a little bit of width. Okay, I'm going to pull this out a little bit more. And then I'm going to continue by pressing E again to extrude. All right. And then you can use this option instead of using the global uh, orientation to scale. Okay, you can turn on the normal. Okay, so that you are following the orientation of these group of selection faces uh, based on the normals. So I'm going to the side here and I'm going to use the scale manipulator here. And then I'm just going to scale it down. And uh, you will know that there's a trick here. You can hold down the shift and can hold on to click on both the move and the scale manipulator so you can see both the move and the scale manipulator is on at the same time so i can gradually make this a little bit bigger and then make scale this thing down a little bit uh, thinner 
and also I can press R to just rotate this a little bit more right and finally I can just press E to extrude another section here and then I can continue my scaling along the 3d view here so scale this down and then I can press E for another small section scale it down here using the manipulator all right and essentially my uh, the basic blade is out so uh, you can actually use the smooth let me go up to object uh, mode and then click on smooth to give it a smooth shading and then I'm gonna press control uh, top row number three to apply a three levels of subdivision so you can see it has it embodies a very nice uh, a shape of the uh, propeller blade in fact it looks like a wing with a gentle twist okay and then you can continue editing this so let's say if the twist is not enough for you all right you can grab these uh, group of faces here grab these group of faces here um, and press control uh, number pad minus to reduce selection well actually I want to select these group of faces here I'm gonna press C and then I'm just going to left mouse click to select using the circular selection tool so I'm going to go back to my uh, right view by pressing number three on the number pad and then I'm going to press R to rotate to give it a more twist here. Okay, now I'm going to switch over to edge mode. I can select the uh, edge, the edge loop here. Okay, as you can see here. And then I can give it a little bit more twist. All right. So you can keep on tweaking this and in fact, you can insert edge loops if you uh, feel that you want this to be a little bit thicker and now because I'm in my normal orientation I'm going to switch over to global so I can use the uh, scale to let's say make this section a little bit bigger okay so now you have a uh, the shape of the propeller blade all right so this is one way to uh, create the propeller blade now what about here now if you look at the uh, um, pictures of propeller blades let me just show you some other images of uh, aircraft propeller blades right so this is just a general search you notice that some of them the root of the blade is actually circular okay let me just show you a much better one like for example the uh, this image which I showed you earlier the root here is actually a circular cross section right so how do we get it to have a circular cross section all right so let's go back to blender again and that's where the loop tools come in you can select these group of faces right and then you can just press e to extrude a small section here then press w and because we activated the loop tools in the add-ons we can choose loop tools and then choose the option called circle all right so notice that the circle you force these selected group of faces to form a very nice circular object but in this case here it's slightly twisted which is not a problem because we can turn on our uh, rotate manipulator you can manually rotate this until the distortion is not so much the twist is not so much okay and then we can press e to extrude another section okay and then if you wish you can scale this down all right and then you can press e again to extrude another portion here all right so this will end up uh you, you can actually stick this at the uh, part of the spinner and to make this whole cleaner i'm going to delete away this fake group of faces by pressing x and delete away the faces okay and this is your completed propeller blade which you can tweak on uh, further if you wish all right so if you want to create a, another second blade you can go to the top view here go to edit mode select all the uh, faces I'm gonna just manipulate them until they are slightly off the center which is here so if you want to duplicate another propeller blade you can just simply uh, press shift D and then press R to rotate okay 180 degrees right so now you have a twin propeller blade okay which you can attach to a cone shape with, uh, to act as a spinner right so this is one way of creating the propeller so now I'm gonna show you another way all right which is actually quite similar but I'm now gonna make use of the uh, loop tools to create the propeller so uh, I'm gonna start off with by creating a plane so shift a create a plane and then I'm gonna press R followed by Y 90 degrees so that I'm facing 90 degrees at the right view okay again I'm gonna do the same uh, thing I'm gonna press uh, control R and then uh, insert an edge loop okay you need to go to edit mode first control R and then uh, do the same thing insert one edge loop here control R insert a couple of edge loops here all right 
and then you can start to create your uh, your uh, cross section for the airfoil shape right so now this method I'm showing might not be the best way but uh, I'm just going to show you so I'm going to delete away the faces here only the faces and then I'm going to switch over the edges and delete away the edges only the edges and then go over to vertex mode in the right view to start to manipulate to create the uh, cross section okay so this is one way but uh, a faster way okay let me just delete away this object first and it would be to press shift a and then create a mesh and then create a circle all right so this is actually a mesh itself and when you create a time it has a fixed number of uh, points here so let me just go back to the beginning again shift a create mesh and then click on circle i'm going to reduce the resolution of the number of vertices to maybe down to uh, maybe 10 okay so 10 will be a good number and then uh, i'm going to go to edit mode and then rotate along the y-axis and then you have this uh, circular shape here okay so i'm going to first of all select this uh, circular shape press shift d to duplicate this so that i got one uh, section here so this will form the root of the propeller blade i'm going to press shift d again and then duplicate this along the uh, x-axis and then i'm just going to scale this up slightly so if we go at look at a side view this is what it looks like and then from this view i can manipulate the uh the curves to form the airfoil shape of the propeller so again the airfoil shape is simply a larger curve on top versus a, a under cambered curve that goes in like this okay in fact a jet propeller blade a jet turbine blade uh, the cross section will look something like this as well so i'm going to select this and then just manually rotate it like this and then i'm going to press shift d to duplicate and then just pull it out here and then go back to the side view again and then scale along the y-axis and maybe scale it along the x-axis a bit then just rotate this slightly and then I can manually tweak this to give it more under camber here okay so now select this edge loop and then press shift D to duplicate another uh, cross section here and then this one I'll just rotate it a little bit and then scale it along the y-axis using the manipulator and then just simply flatten it a little bit more okay so if you just want to select only this section you can press L a couple of times okay so only the linked vertices will be selected okay, I'm gonna bring this entire cross section down a little bit okay, maybe this one down here a bit okay so finally I'm going to just select this edge loop press shift D duplicate small and another one and then just uh, scale this thing uh, all the way down here like so all right maybe this edge loop I'm gonna push it back a bit here okay so now we have this this cross section here so using the loop tools we're gonna loft them together so to loft them we're just gonna start off with these two shapes first okay uh, okay I'm just gonna disable the manipulator for the time being by clicking down here okay hold down to alt right mouse click okay hold down the shift and then you press W and then use the bridge function now when you are bridging make sure that there's no twisting if there is you adjust the twisting here now uh, some of you might say why don't I just select the entire just uh, select all the uh, loops holding down shift alt and then apply a bridge okay if you do that sometimes you will get twisting problems now over here it seems to work very fine but over here there's a empty section which we have to uh, bridge again so uh, let me just undo that okay so sometimes it'll be much better if you to start off with uh, section by section then apply the loft all right so i'm going to continue from here then w and then i'm going to use loft okay so this is the potential problem that you might face okay so if you encounter this problem you can try playing with the twisting okay and uh, turn on the reverse and then key on adjusting it until the twist is removed all right so there is still a 
problem here. So I'm going to, yeah, so now this is fixed. All right, so that is the potential problem that it might face where the uh, the loft is not linking correctly. All right, so I'm going to select here. Okay, let me just try all the way and then try the uh, loft again. Okay, so again, you can see this is the kind of problem that you might face. So I might undo this. I'll just start off with one section at a time. Holding Alt, right mouse click, Shift, Alt, and then W and Lot. Okay, so the twist here is very bad. I'm going to adjust the value here. Okay, so this looks good. And you can even try bridge, all right? So if the, the points do meet, all right, at the correct orientation, you can try using bridge, okay? But uh, bridge and, and loft in this case will almost give you the same result. So again, it's a twisting problem, which you have to adjust. And now it has filled everything nicely. Okay, now for this face here, for this open hole here, you can cap it by uh, pressing uh, Control F to bring out the face specials. Okay, there's this Alt F function here, fill. Okay, if you choose it, all right, you'll fill everything nicely, but it'll give you triangular faces. Okay, so triangular faces are not, uh, I mean, uh, it's not very good when you subdivide it, okay? So, but the, then sometimes you cannot avoid it completely. All right, like in this case here, later I'm going to convert these into quads. I'll still end up with a single triangular face. So I'm going to convert these uh, triangle face into quads. So again, because these are faces, I'm going to press Control F, and then I'm going to choose the option tries to quads. That means it's going to combine two triangular faces into quads. So I'm going to use this option. Okay. okay I'm going to switch over to face mode first, and I'm going to try the option again. Control F, and then tries to quads. Okay. So it is not working. So if that's the case, you will have to manually uh, link the faces itself. So I'm not sure why that didn't work, but uh, we can always use this uh, function here. Uh, you can select two opposing faces here, and you can press F to join them together. Together, all right. And just nice, we have all the four faces all joined together. All right. So I'm going to select these group of faces, press E to extrude another small portion here, and then just scale it down like that. All right. So now our uh, prop is done. Okay. So now we're in object mode. I'm just going to apply a smooth. All right. And you can see the normals are not facing the right direction. Okay. So if I give it a subsurf modifier by pressing control, uh, top row number three, you see all these black lines. Okay. That's because some of the faces are pointing upwards. Some of the faces are pointing downwards. So go back to edit mode, select all the faces by pressing A and then press control N to unify the faces. Okay. So you have a very nice looking propeller using this method. All right, so if you know your propellers, you know the cross sections, right? You can create a really, really nice looking prop. And which at the same time, uh, the resolution is relatively low, which you can still adjust nicely. All right, so if you go to vertex mode, uh, you can grab, press box select and grab these vertices. And you can uh, turn on your uh, manipulator. And then you can adjust the length uh, to whichever length that you like. All right, you can even continue to twist, okay, different sections. Or adjust the thickness, all right? If you're not happy with the thickness underneath here, you can still pull it up to give it a nice uh, camber curved uh, bottom shape, all right? So this is how you create a, or I showed you basically two different methods to create propellers in Blender. Okay, now, then how do you create the, uh, the spinner, all right? So we'll create the spinner by creating a cone. So I'm going to press Shift A and then create a uh, cone, all right? So the cone is going to point vertically, so it's oriented to this propeller. So this cone, I'm going to give it about, uh, I'm just going to bring it down to 24 units, all right? 24 units, and then I'm going to go to edit mode, and I'm going to press S to scale it up. All right, and then uh, I'm going to delete away the bottom face, because later when I subdivide this, the uh, cap faces at the bottom here is going to give me problems. So I'm going to select the bottom vertex, control number pad plus, then press X to delete away the faces. So I end up with an object looking like this. And also because these are triangular faces, I can't insert edge loops here. So I need to cut across all these faces here. So I'm going to right mouse click and select. Uh, I'm going to actually basically press A to select all the faces. Then go to wireframe mode. Then I'm just going to either the front or the side view. And then holding down to your shift 
K, Shift K, and then you just drag the knife across. Shift K and left mouse click and drag will force it to cut right at the midpoints. So you don't have to come over here to select midpoints. So when I cut across midpoints across this uh, triangular faces, formerly triangular faces, it has forced the bottom row here to become quads. So I can press Ctrl R and easily insert edge loops. Okay, so that's the reason why I want to cut across these triangular faces, to force these to become quads. So I can right mouse click and now select this edge loop, and then I can press Ctrl E to bring up the edge specials to bring out edge slide. So I can bring this all the way up. Okay, so we can deal with this later. So I'm going to insert about maybe two edge loops, or maybe uh, I'll insert edge loops once I subdivide this. So I'm going to subdivide this by pressing uh, Ctrl 3, and then I'm going to smooth it. I'm going to go to object mode to do that. And smooth this. And then, now watch this. If I insert one edge loop here, all right, and then while it's still being selected, you can press R to just scale it up. Okay, and if you go to object mode, you have this very nice uh, tapered shape. Now, if we have a cap here, we're going to end up with a mess of uh, sub-divided uh, triangular faces. Okay, so now we have this nice looking uh, spinner. All right, so you can simply leave the propeller here. You let it stick out from the spinner. Or if you if you want to make this be, uh, look better, you can go to edit mode. You can insert a couple more edge loops. Let me just slide this edge loop first, Control E, and then just slide this up, and then press another edge loop here, and maybe just scale this up slightly. So if you want to be precise, you can actually delete away about maybe a three faces here. Okay, so that it has a gap here, so you can let the propeller stick out from the gap. Okay, so you have to find a figure that is uh, divisible by, let's say if you if you are using a twin, creating a twin propeller, you need to be able to de uh, delete the same number of faces opposite. But if you are creating, let's say, a, a three-bladed propeller, okay, so you have to do some calculations. So in this case, uh, I'm just going to take this propeller and then I'm going to rotate it based on the cursor here. So I'm going to turn on, rotate along the cursor. So I'm going to rotate this blade, which I completed right about here. Okay, so if I want to uh, duplicate a uh, propeller that is three-bladed, so uh, 360 divided by 3 is 120. So I'm going to press Shift-D, duplicate this. Then I'm going to press R, then I press the number 1, 2, 0. Okay, for this uh, second duplicate, I'm going to duplicate another one. Right mouse click so it snap back to place. Then press R, followed by 1, 2, 0. All right, and then you can use this as a reference to start to uh, model your spinner. So just nice, we have these uh, three faces here. You can press X to delete away the faces here. And then for this one, okay, these three faces. Okay, notice I'm pressing Z to toggle uh, to wireframe mode. And then you have your spinner and the propeller sticking out nicely. Of course, uh, you can solidify this so that it looks nicer. So let me just... Press A to select all these faces, Control F, and then I'm going to choose uh, Solidify, and then maybe just uh, solidify them inwards. Okay, you can add more edge loops later on to tighten the edge here to create a nice spinner. Of course, you can still carry on working on the spinner to get it to look perfect. So now i got these three propeller blades, I can select them by holding down shift and right mouse clicking and then selecting the spinner last I press con the command control P to make the spinner the parent all right so let me just push these aside so now I got this nice propeller if I rotate then followed by Z now you can see that I'm rotating the propeller with three blades okay and if I scale this down the parent okay the child in this case the propeller blades will follow all right so that's essentially how you uh, model a propeller blades and uh, including the spinner as well so i hope you enjoy this uh, video tutorial and uh, give it a shot yourself all right thanks for watching